Welcome back. In this video, I will introduce you to the different possibilities to interact with the drag component the advanced framework provides. It might seem a bit exaggerated to have a whole video for that, but the drag component is a very intricate and elaborate part of the framework with tons of use cases, as you can see from the fact that it even has its own example map. The Advanced Framework Core provides you with three interaction components that are adapted to interact with the drag state component. Two of them, the comp large drag and the comp overlap drag, were designed for this purpose specifically. The third is the comp select comp, which is a bit more limited in comparison to the other two interaction components, but has other uses as well. As you can see, I already added the comp select comp to the actor. This is because I tend to use it for testing a lot. To set it up, we just need to enter the tag of the drag component here and the tag of the bead mesh here. Now let's head over to the drag component because here is the meat of this part. In the drag type map, you have a variable called select rule. This is the setting which determines how the select is implemented by the drag component. Let me just create three instances of the puzzle in a row to show you the differences between the three possible settings. I had to also change a few other settings in the drag component to make the select component work with it properly. One of the most important things is to put the snap type to snap to set segment because that's practically what the select is toggling. I also put the start position to 100 to make my point more clear. And down here in the section set, I changed the second section position from 190 to 100. So you can clearly see what happens upon select. I did this for all three actors. And of course, I changed the select rule according to the label I put. As you can see, Toggle Extreme makes the draggable mesh move between the first and last section of the section set. By the way, this is one of the reasons it's absolutely necessary that you enter the sections in order when creating the section set. Let's go to the step up modulo. As you can see, it's a bit more sophisticated finding the section with the next higher value compared to the current section and moving the draggable mesh there. And upon arriving at the highest section, the draggable mesh goes back to the lowest with the next select. The step down modulo setting is practically the op opposite of the step up modulo. It moves the draggable mesh to the next lower section and goes to the highest section when the mesh is already at the lowest section upon select. I admit the limits of using the select component component to interact with the drag component are obvious. So let's proceed with the comp latch drag. This component is a child of the comp latch, which was and was specifically designed to interact with the drag component. It was the obvious choice for the puzzle cube, so I already set it up for the other videos. Most settings I already explained in the video on the latch component. So let's just have a short overview. I want the latch component to be active and I don't want auto latch. I reduced the max attach and detest distance drastically to make it more difficult for the player to find the way of the beat. Like this, the motion controller will detach much more easily and uh, the beat will go back to the start of the spline. It's supposed to be a puzzle after all. Lastly, I entered the tag of the beat static mesh here so the latch component knows which mesh to work with and I did not allow simultaneous latching. One hand is enough for this puzzle. All these settings come from the parent component, however. The main use setting of the comp latch drag is the drag tag here, which determines for which drag component the latch interaction is relevant. So I add the tag of the drag component here. As you can see, the latch drag works out of the box, provided you provide the draggable mesh with all necessary sockets which is an attach point for all controllers and hand position sockets for hand motion controllers. The large drag component seems to be the obvious choice for a puzzle like this. Still, let me show you the overlap component too. First, we have to add it to the...
and add the tag of the drag component here. Here I add a collision sphere which is attached to the bead and just slightly bigger. This is not a necessary proceeding, but will create more reliable overlaps in our case. And most importantly, I equip the collision sphere with the tag, which I enter here in the component tag of collision setting on the overlap component. If you are not using a collision component, just add the tag of the static mesh here, which is responsible for the overlap. You can see from first glance that the specialty of the overlap drag component is to allow many more entities to initiate an interaction with the actor. Most other interaction components require the pawn to participate directly in the interaction. With the overlap component, you can also initiate interactions using an actor, the pawn grab, this pole, for example. As you can see, now we can use this pole to move the beat. And we can go even further. As modification, let's put the hand motion controllers we use in the actors to allow array. Now the player can move the beat with the hand. This is no latch or grab, however. The beat reacts solely to the presence of the motion controller without any button input from the real life controller. You might guess that the comp overlap drag is ideal to implement pressure plates that the player can position, act on, or buttons that you can just punch. And you find several examples for that in the examples map of the Advanced Framework Core. Well, by now you should be up to speed on how you can implement interactions with the drag state component of the Advanced Framework Core. So I'll sign off for now. See you soon. Bye bye.